Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome back to the Hardcore Minecraft world. We are back here right next to our brand new builds. The first time we have ever used some copper inside of this world and our first custom azalea tree, and oh my god, I love them both. Yes, I purposely not waxed that copper up there. A lot of people mentioned that, and don't worry, I want to see what it looks like otherwise. So we'll just leave it to age for a little bit now. But holy cow, my friends, thank y'all so very much for the support so far on this series since 1.17. Seems like y'all are absolutely loving it, so I really do appreciate it. If you still are, please be sure to click that like button down below and subscribe if you're brand new, but we've got a lot of stuff rocking today. Today is all about improving everything we've worked on so far and expanding the castle yet again. I want to spend some time working on the creeper farm again here because we still got to fix that guy up. I just need to finish lighting up all of the caverns and I think I'm going to expand the creeper farm too. But number two on top of that uh, regarding the castle over here is I want to build the structure that's going to be this entire spot probably all the way over to here and if we have the time maybe we will expand it all the way so it can be this whole front face because i think that'd be absolutely amazing to have but first up here very importantly my friends i'm very much in the mood to stream and just hang out and chat with everybody so i think what we're going to be doing first here is working on the dripstone farm and but i'm thinking we turn this entire cavern all the way down here into a lovely lush cave dripstone environment and finish up that entire little tunnel we have going over there expand the dripstone farm some more and all that super cool stuff so without any further ado right smack dab at the start of today's episode let's go ahead and kick this off in a good old-fashioned time-lapse mode There we go, my friends. Check this place out. Holy cow, it is really hard to maneuver throughout it, but I am loving what we're turning this pit into down here. I think it is so absolutely awesome. We got the dripstone production ending up right down there in all those chests. We've got our little wave to the amethyst geode right over there, and we've got this entrance into what was beginning strip mines for all of the copper stuff that really did not pan out all too well. But what I was thinking is we could come back in here with a little bit of the spruce wood action and really clean this place up a lot and make it look a lot nicer than it is right now. So maybe we have a little bit of the staircase action right over in here. And we can extend out with a wee bit of a platform that we might have been developing. And we have these drip leaves down here that I don't think I can harvest all too well. But that being said, if we bring ourselves with a little bit of a upside down stair action right there and a trap door, I did craft up a few ladders as well. And I was thinking this could be a good enough way for now for us to be able to get up into the strip mine so we can go like this. And now we're up at the copper layers. And I think that's pretty sweet. And to help reinforce it just a touch, we can do some fences right over there. The next one we got to deal with, which I did after the time lapse, start messing around with a little bit of the deep slate action, seeing what it could look like as we're going to be moving from this stuff all the way down there to the base using the deep slate. So keep that in mind as we're rocking. But we've got this right in here. And holy cow, look at all of the drip snow that we've got. The point of drip snow is going to be so, so good. It takes a long time for this farm to actually build up for it to run. But when it does run and it's actually full, it gives more than a double chest full of it. So that is absolutely awesome. Hi T, how you doing up there? But my thought along this section would be to take ourselves right along the edge over here and see if we can't loop it up a little bit over maybe to there. And then we do a ladder going up and bring us back into that section. And I was thinking where we have the minecart, we could bring a little wooden platform that could get you onto the lift that goes up and down. Maybe that's not only for resources, but also for people to get in and out. For the platform, let's go really simple for now. So I've got this set up over here and it brings you about out to the middle, flying with an elytra from the base all the way up there. It's gonna be a little bit harder now, but we'll figure it out as we're going, right? It, it'll be totally fine. But the reason why I did that first is because I think we can use some of the supports from there and bring it down to connect into the lower wood and actually have this as a little bit of a way that runs across them could be kind of fun. Maybe it's going to be a bit tight in here. It looks like I'm trying to make this about as thick as I can and over exaggerating it quite a lot. And it's bringing me down right to here with that being very chunky. So maybe we just have some supports coming off the base holding this thing up. 
but we'll figure it out. There we have it. That is looking a million times better now. I know it's slightly off centered, but I think that's going to be okay because that's probably where the minecart fit best for when they were creating the track. But it is now centered on top of this thing. When I had created it originally, it was uh, one block off to the side. So I got that whole thing fixed over there. But oh, it's looking good. We got the little pathway down below. You can use the ladder to get all the way down here, collect all your pointed dripstone, move back upwards. And then there also is a kind of weird way over here to get all the way to the top of this point, but it does work. You can get all the way up here, flippy flippy the lever, and they will go off and collecting up whatever dripstone is available to be collected right now, which uh, is not too much, not too much, but it's okay. Now there's the whole back section over there that still needs to be finished, but that's something that we'll get to in the near future because there's a lot of other things I wanna be tackling in today's episode that we do not have a whole lot of time for. I would like to spend a bit of time fixing up the creeper farm and getting that thing tweaked. And of course, adding a brand new section to the castle today. I really wanna get a big old build and stand it right up there. But before that, one thing that I really enjoy on the castle right now is that big old dude up there. The big flag using the white wool and the blue wool or the light blue wool. And I don't have a whole lot of that stuff. And also, I guess we need some blue wool here so that we can keep creating these banners. And then we're using brown wool. You get you get the gist here of we need a lot of wool, my friend. So I was thinking we build up a bit of a sheep auto farm today right out in this section that we can turn into a pretty cool building starting off what might be a small town section below the castle. Gathering up a bunch of resources that we're going to need for this little sheep farm over here. Thankfully, these things are so simple to build. It's kind of ridiculous. But I was thinking we could bring ourselves all the way out here where we need some dispensers, observers, redstone dust, and glass, and then hoppers, and I need to get some hopper minecarts rocking. But anyways, we are over here, and I was thinking about building up the town, as mentioned, on this side of the area. I always thought it'd be really, really fun, but I want to be able to make sure the castle's still feeling grand, so I don't want to go all that close to it. And we have the water level right down there. So I was thinking about turning this into a bit of a bridge, extending that water in here and having basically a tide flats area where the water can come in and go back out, expanding into what the castle lore is going to be over there. So I'm thinking the sheep farm for now is we can set right up at this point. Now from here, the idea is that we're going to have two different cabinets for things to be living inside of. So the goal is to have a sheep sitting inside of there. We're going to have a dispenser looking at the sheep right over in here, and we're going to load some shears inside of the dispenser right like that. Now, the way this works is we face an observer at that block of grass that we have there in the middle. The sheep's going to eat the grass. The observer is going to put out a signal coming right back over here, which we put the redstone dust on top of. That is a full system right in there, ready to rock. Now, what I wanted to do was extend this out so we can have four on each side and this might cause a little bit of extra issues here but i don't think it will from how i understand this stuff because it'll just make the dispenser try and fire then the sheep won't have any wool on it so it won't matter but the idea is that we can tile it right like this going the entire way look at me being a redstoner building with actual blocks of iron over here oh wow i'm so good at this game but anyways that is more or less a completed sheep farm system right there we just got to get the collection set up and we got to get uh the probably most important part of a sheep farm is a sheep inside of this thing but I also want to be making this thing pretty over here. So my friends, I think it is time for a montage. And there we have it, my friends. The automatic wool farm is now finished up, and this thing is looking absolutely amazing. I am so happy with how this thing turned out. Could not help but add in a few little bushes all over the place. 
we've got access going inside if we need to fix anything or reload up on any shears or anything like that i did tweak the top of it a little bit as well so it's looking absolutely fantastic with some towers up there we've got some windows and most importantly we've got a lot of wool coming in over here already over a stack of the brown wool which is amazing it's not going to be the end all be all of sheep farms as we only have eight sheepy boys in here but it's working out really well for us so far and i love the look of it i think it fits in really well with everything else that we have so far with also being its own unique feel of over here and what we're gonna do with the city well, town, I'm not committing to a city. We gotta finish the actual castle first before we do much else, but I think it's absolutely awesome over there. I'll tell y'all what though, I really wanna get an experience farm set up here inside this world, as especially now the wings are almost broken again, and the only experience farm I currently have, well, it involves a lot of villager trading. But over here, we've got a lot of eggs again. These things have, uh, yeah, y'all know what's coming up here, is um, let's try this whole wither killing thing again. I got the wither skeleton skulls right here, ready to rock. We got three more of those guys, and we got plenty of eggs we can take into the end with us, and I'm gonna do it right this time. I will do the research before I actually, you know, summon the wither. Here we are again, endlessly throwing eggs into where we're gonna be spawning the wither. Oh boy, super fun stuff in the end. Now that we've filled the chamber with live chickens, we must wait about 10 minutes for the proper harvesting to happen. Make sure you wait until the chickens are sufficiently popping down here, and then you can insert the last wither skeleton skull, which might be a little bit harder than not. No, it worked. It worked. Okay, there's a wither down in there. Uh, let's hope it works this time. I don't think he can kill the wither roses after they spawn. Let's see. Well, there's a lot of dead chickens. Um, a lot of death. A lot of death. Oh, I'm seeing some wither roses on the ground though. That is good news for us in here. Yep, get them, get them, get them. All right, we picked up one rose so far. Please tell me this farm actually worked and made a lot of them. Come on up here, chickens. Yes, that's great. Come on over. Yep, there we go. Come on, chickens. I think there's a bunch of them down here, unfortunately. Somehow they, uh, they got stuck underneath. Come on up, chickens. There we go. Yeah, welcome to the party. Come on in. Up this way. Come on, guys. Yeah, it's great. Look at that. Oh, yeah, so very nice. Well, yeah. Well, we managed to get up to two stacks of wither roses, so that should be pretty good. And an extra one right there. Okay, perfect. Let's just kill the wither and the rest of the chickens. Actually, now he just sunk down. Oh, I could have gotten to half health and it worked so much better. But there we go. Brand new wither star for us. Nether star withery withering star thing now we know how to do it if we need this place again so that's gonna be super duper awesome and then we just pretty much need to fill in that point and then that'll be our exit we just stand here throwing all the eggs or setting up the wither on top of those polished blocks down there and that's kind of our rose farming chamber for now I do feel a touch bad about uh, how many chickens died in the making of this, but look how many stacks of raw chicken we got and how many stacks of feathers. Oh, that's going to be great. No idea what I'm going to use it for, but we've got it. Oh, that's awkward. Okay, um, let's fly on home. Are there any chickens out here we need to uh, dispose of? Take that as a no, and there's a lot of mobs around, and we don't want the villagers to die, so run away. So I did a quick check as I was curious, and um, bummer part is, my friends, is we need 300 wither roses. Well, actually, more specifically, we need 348 for the farm that I'm doing here. So I've got to do that a few more times to generate just a few more wither roses for us. Oh, boy. But first, I wanted to come down here and say hello to all of our villagers, see if we can't unlock a few more trades for ourselves, and soon I'm going to be totally expanding the stonemason section. I think I'm going to double these ones in size because they can trade us dripstone, and I think that would be amazing. But that's stuff we can all get set up in time. How are we doing today, villagers? Thank you all so very much for your lovely trades. Honestly, I would love to let these guys all out, out and have them roaming around the area. I think that'd be so much more fun. So we got to soon add some extra villagers into here that I think will just wander around. That could be really cool. We got to fix up our entrance and exit, though, first. You are not a stonemason. Elytra is fully repaired though, so that is absolutely awesome, and the pickaxe is fully repaired. So I'll tell you what, folks, I did promise a little bit of castle building here in today's episode, and you know what? We got a lot of this stuff settled out here, and look at all those blocks of clay. Oh, it's amazing. Now, before we get anything rocking on the castle here, I think we gotta first and foremost fix up the creeper farm. It just has to happen. The rocket supply is starting to dwindle again. We're down to seven right now. It's working pretty well during the daytime, but when it gets to be nighttime, it is not working at all. Uh, we got 64 and 11, so that's a good amount of stuff that we can supply for the next little bit. But I think I'm going to spend a little while here working out the creeper farm issues.
Fly and I through the sky. My friends, we're ready to go. It's looking fantastic. Oh my gosh, I've got a little bit more gunpowder rocking over here, and it's so very nice. Oh, it's so good to have this all ready to rock and everything in here. That creeper farm is working a charm now, and oh my gosh, I think at this point in time, I've spent a total of nine hours lighting up the caverns around this entire area, so no mobs are spawning unless it is nighttime and they are in the overworld area, like on top of everything in there. There they are dropping down here, burning their little toesies on the soul fire and check that out. Have an AFK at it all. And I think it's about time that we do it because I need to get in a creative testing world and figure out what the heck this section of the castle right here is going to look like because that's probably pretty important before we get to actually you know building it and time lapsing it. So I'm gonna give myself a little while here to draft up the brand new building, sit on my little AFK spot right on here and um, sit tight. We'll be right back. Oh my gosh. What is that? Flip's merch you should buy. Link in the description. It has been quite a while, my friends, and I've got the entire next section planned out and ready to go, but I want to check up on how much gunpowder we've managed to collect throughout this time period because uh, it took a little while longer than I thought. And we've got a list of resources we need to gather up now. Coming down here, what are we looking at? Ooh, almost a full chest of gunpowder. I will take that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Creeper Farm. Now for a little bit of background information here, as I use Light Matica a lot to build these larger structures for the castle, you can see a big old box in the sky up there kind of planning out the little bit of the top section. There you go, there's a little bit of spoiler before the time lapse. But I can actually see exactly how many of each resource I need. So if I do ML right here, you can see all of the different blocks that I'm using. So pretty much for me, I just got to run around the world and collect up a lot of these guys, which as you can see, there's a lot of small things down here at the base too. But one thing that I need a lot of right now is calcite and I don't want to destroy that geo that we found already so far that we're using inside of our mine. So I've got to fly around a little bit here and see if we can't come across a brand new geode. Got some more rockets here on the hot bar and we got plenty of leftovers ready to go for ourselves. And uh, I'm going to go do a little bit of exploring. Apparently oceans are the best place to find geodes. And shipwrecks, let's see if we got a treasure map down here. Potatoes, very good treasure, great treasure. And iron. These should be all brand new chunks at this point in time, so we're out here looking for a little bit of a bump in the bottom of the ocean, and maybe right down here? Nope, that was gravel. Oh my gosh, it's a glow squid gl glowing in the overworld. Wait, wait, what? I didn't know they could spawn in the ocean. You're beautiful. Give me your ink. The healing power of friendship, I agree. Team up with an axolotl and win a fight. Where's the axolotl around here? Oh, he's right there. <laughs> I guess we were hunting the squid together. Okay, that's fine. I think I'm missing a lot by flying around way above ground here. So grabbing a little bit of a boat will be able to be a little bit closer to the surface of water instead of way up there. So I should hopefully be able to see a bit better under here. Things are just looking blue everywhere. Through the power of friendship, a glow squid has actually revealed what we need down here. Check that out. Thank you, Mr. Glowy Boy. I would like your ink sex again, please. You really helped me out here a bunch, buddy, but I, I need them. There's even axolotls ever around here. My hope is that we can destroy this entire geode. It's going to be kind of a pain with it being underwater here, but I really want to get everything out of it. That axolotl is completely messing up the drown here. Actually, he looks like he's had some better days. Oh, there's mobs down in here. Okay. Oh, creeper, 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 creeper. No, 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 no. Don't you blow up this. I need this. I need everything in here. There we go. Time to break it all down. Yeah, no, I think we've destroyed it. I think we have taken about everything out of the geode that we can possibly take at this point in time. There's a little bit of smooth basalt over there still, but check this out. We got almost eight stacks of calcite. We've actually got a lot of amethyst in here too. And look at these guys right here. I found some diamonds while swinging around down here. The glowy boys really led me to a lot of diamonds, so that is super sweet. So we had, what, nine blocks in here of diamond ore? And how many diamonds are we going to end up with? 22! Ooh, we'll add those to the coffers. Well, it looks like it's time to fly on off out of here. And hey, there's our boat. Nice! And we can use this guy. Nah, nah, we'll just leave him here. That's where we know where the geode was. Look at it down there. Oh, the glowy boys are going all over the place. But it's time for me to gather up quite a few more resources and get to that old castle build, my friends. Everything I could possibly need to build up this next section of the castle is filled in all three shulker boxes right there, my friends. Oh my gosh, that was a long grocery list here. But without any further ado, folks, let's go ahead and kick this off into good old fashioned time lapse mode.
There we go, folks. It's now finished up. Oh my gosh, do I love this new section over here. I just crafted up a bunch more blue banners for ourselves so we can throw these guys around the city. And if you didn't catch it, we I think we tamed our first Coda. This dude spawned right here as we we're hanging out. Optifine is back here for us. And uh, well, that means we can get new pupper dogs hanging out around. How oh, you doing, buddy? Good to have you. But up here, it is looking so good. It is looking absolutely magical. I love this place. Stole this banner to build some more, so let's go and place him back in there, and we can head on up this way and just check out this atmosphere we've been able to create. There's still a lot of work I want to do in here to get rid of all these torches sitting on the ground. Got to get some hidden lighting in, but look at this little alleyway we have. Oh, it is so, so good. I'm so happy with this. Need to figure out some ways to decorate this stuff out a little bit more and get some more detail in here, because right now it's a little bland with big flat walls, but I think it's okay. I think for now it's totally okay with me. We've got a lot of space on the inside, too, to be working out with. I kind of last minute changed all this stuff to the calcite in here, and I'm really glad I did. It worked out super well. And I appear to have forgotten a block right there, so let's just throw one of those in. It'll be totally fine. But out here in the front, we've got this big old tower out of the every all of the whiter colors here with the diorite, the calcite, and the andesite. And I think it's looking so, so good. But what I was thinking is up here, we could kind of come down to this layer and add some of these banners in. So we just get that extra little bit of the pop of color throughout here. And I really love this rampart thing that we have set up. I need to put a lot of the junk away so I can get some more rockets. I always accidentally make slightly too many of an item as we're going throughout. So I just end up with these chests with like five, six, or maybe seven of a unique item. And it's so annoying. But there we go. All cleaned up and ready. And just taking a look back here from the sky. And it looks so good. That dripstone roof up there, very unique. I will say that I think we need to add some more of that with the white tower and the dripstone roof to the skyline of this area. I think it's going to look really super cool because that lighter color really breaks up the sky a lot with between the tower itself and then that spike on top being a much lighter than the browns that we have throughout the rest of it. I really like it, but I think it's something that needs to grow on me. Hopefully it'll grow faster than dripstone actually grows inside this game. But when we look at it from this side where we have the second white building and then we have that, it really sets the scene around here for something that we can use. And I think somebody broke my door. They did. How rude. Good thing I have some extras though, cause yep, random items again. What is super cool about this is the next section we build here will also incorporate the bridge over to the far side. And then we've probably got maybe one or two more build sections on this side before that whole section is done. The whole first half of the castle will be done so very soon and we can start working on the interiors, which is super duper fun. But now that we've got this sorted, we can start the terraforming. So I wanna do that next episode. But most importantly is I wanna update these maps. I should really get all of these junk chests out of here too. This is from pre shulker box time. That stuff's just been sitting there forever. Okay, so it looks like I already did update it once in order to get that guy on there. And now we can come along here, update that whole corner. And we're finally moving on to this upper section of the map. Check that out. We actually got something built on it now. Oh, it's looking so good. I'm so happy with this. From here, it feels like we have a castle. From right here, if we were able to get the terraforming completed all the way to the ground to bring that guy in line, this scene right here, that's a castle. That's that's straight up a castle right there, and I'm so happy with it. Now, there's been something I've been wanting to try for a little while. As spring is starting to get to an end and we're moving into the summer, at least up here in the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of new growth happening on, on a lot of the trees around me. Which means if you look at all the evergreen trees and pine trees and, well, in this case, spruce trees that grow up in the area, they're starting to get these really light colored green little things on the end of them. And they're looking so cool outside. I love staring at the trees when I'm outside looking around right now. And with me absolutely destroying this tree here in Minecraft, it's because I want to try building up a cool new custom tree for ourselves. I call these trees the shaved spruce, the spruced away, and the spiral spruce. But now to try and make our own unique spruce tree. I was thinking right out here in the front of this guy could be a great spot for it. So we could have something really unique and fun right next to our new wool farm. I wanna really make the village that we're building down here one with nature, similar to how we've done the farmland, just a lot more buildings and uh, less fields. But coming up this way and starting out with any spruce tree that I do, just adding a few of the branches onto this guy and taking ourselves as tall as we need to be. The closest thing we really have to the spruce logs in here is gonna be the dark oak fence. I think that's pretty much as good as we're gonna get. So if we bring ourselves all the way up here and just stretch it a few more times, this should pretty much do it for the height of the tree. 
So I want to make sure this feels like a spruce tree, but it's got the little bit of the new growth I was talking about. So I'm going to just get started here, adding in a bunch of leaves as I would normally for a spruce tree. And then I think afterwards we'll come back in with the other two types and really mix it up from there. But this is going to be a big guy, but I think it'll work out pretty well. Bottom half of the tree is looking pretty good. We got a few bare spots in there, but overall, I think I like it. I kind of like the idea of having the lower limbs really limbed up as if they kind of cut them out of here because we're in the middle of a future town. Definitely a town full of cats, many a cat. But anyways, they'd probably clear out the lower branches so there wouldn't be too much hanging down here so we could put a park bench under here and people could actually hang out in there. But these little gaps up here, like right in that spot, probably gonna fill that in. There we go, that does it for a big old spruce tree right in there, love that thing. Now, how the heck do I incorporate these? I think the way that we structure it is we have spruce leaves that then fade into birch leaves because that's really similar and then they fade into oak leaves there at the end and oak leaves are gonna be very, very sparse in here. Birch leaves have been added in and it's not hard to see. It's really hard to see the birch leaves in there. I haven't even started adding in the oak leaves because every time I try, I'm just like, wow, that's bright. <laughs> Maybe we just try those very much at the top up here and then slowly work their way downwards. I don't know. This could look absolutely terrible to everybody else, but my colorblind brain over here says it looks pretty dang good for a tree. I really like that. I think it turned out pretty well, but my friends, I am way the heck out of time for this episode. Holy cow, this one has absolutely turned into a mega episode between the Dripstone Cavern to the Castle Build to a, a sheep farm. What else are we going to do in a single episode? Holy cow, I don't know if we can keep up this pace, but I am absolutely loving this series. Please be sure to click that like button down below. If you made it this far in today's episode, my friends, this thing has been about 30 hours worth of work at this point in time, so all your support is very much appreciated. And if you have not already, my friends, please be sure to click that subscribe button so we can see the finished castle project around here and the ever-expanding farmland of our lovely little base over here. Thank you all so very much for watching, and with that, I will catch you on the flip side.